the history of our solar system and how did Alalu know that Tiamat, Ki, Earth had water and gold? This is the story of the battle of the gods and the breakage of Tiamat. Did you ever wonder where the moon came from? A lot of people speculate that it is a satellite brought to Earth. But science has another theory, and it is the most plausible of all. But how did the Anunnaki know? Because it was the history of our solar system. Earth science has finally caught up to what the Anunnaki Sumerian gods left for us in the ancient tablets. This is from the Smithsonian Science Magazine. The moon was formed in a smash-up between Earth and a near twin. And this is what scientists believe actually happened. And it's not a coincidence that it's exactly the same story the Sumerian gods, the Anunnaki, left for us. This is from the Smithsonian Magazine. And this is where they confirm the story. The moon was born in a collision of a Mars-sized body and the early Earth. But beyond that, much about the world we see in our skies every night is still a mystery. After 61 missions, including six astronaut visits that collected samples of the moon rocks, many questions remain, including how much of the moon is made from that lost planet's leftovers and how much was stolen from Earth. And isn't it fascinating that the first people to tell us this was in Sumer, Lavolia that we call it mythology. As you can see, it has been proven factual. So how did they know? Simply because what they wrote in their tablets is real, and that information was for us to gain knowledge in the future. Now, in this story, I'm going to tell you how Kingu Tiamat's giant satellite becomes Earth's moon. And this is the story of Alalu seeing Nibiru for the first time from outer space. If you'd like to catch up, the previous episodes are all in this playlist. And now let's get back to the story. So Tiamat was what was later on called Ki and now Earth. And here comes from the outer of our solar system a rogue planet that got trapped on going closer and closer to our sun. While all the planets were moving into this new alignment due to the intruder, Nibiru, planet X, Nibiru that contained the seed of life gets trapped into our sun's orbit and now is heading for a collision with Tiamat. It was called Tiamat because it was ruled by the reptilian queen Tiamat, that was her name. So Nibiru, in its primitive form, holding the seed of life, smashes into Tiamat. This breakage creates half of this planet that became Ki, and the other piece that became our moon. The Anunnaki in per se were not alive when this happened. So this story was told to them by those that later on created Nibiru because Nibiru was a refugee planet. So let me slip the story in really quick. Tiamat, the reptilian queen, ruled over Orion and this solar system. When Nibiru got caught into the sun's orbit, they knew that it was going to collide with Tiamat. So they evacuated the planet. And this is also why they say that there is a claim by the reptilian saying that Earth was originally their planet. It's true. Tiamat had dominion here on Earth and only moved back to Orion, a planet on Orion, in the Orion system when they were evacuating from this planet. So now at this point, you have Tiamat that has all of these uh, 60-foot reptilian dragon humanoid children. And these guys start mating with other breeds of extraterrestrials in the Orion system. This intermingling creates the first Anunnaki residents of the planet. They were actually refugees, and their skin colors were red and blue, some green. Just think of Guardians of the Galaxy with their skin tones, very much like that. In fact, I think that the movie got inspiration from these stories, because they're depicted perfectly. So back to the water and gold. 
This is how the Nibirians of now, of then, of then in the now, knew this. Because obviously observing this collision from the Orion system, they saw that when Nibiru smashed and collided into Tiamat, they said that her veins were made of liquid gold, that the, that the blood of Tiamat was gold, meaning that inside the planets, there was liquid gold. Then once the refugees went and moved on Nibiru the planet, because it was now stable, that's when they had their history of our solar system. And the only reason that we knew this up until now was because the Sumerians told us. But it was always taken into consideration as mythology. But now that scientists are saying, yes, this is what actually happened based on their own private research, shouldn't we start connecting the two? Because if this is real and everything else that Sumerians left, describing each planet, what color they are, how they are, how the atmosphere is, coincides with reality. Isn't this proof enough for the mundane to understand that these are real stories? It's not mythology. You have inverted true history with fantasy and decided that the true history was actually most of it fantasy. So in the story of Alalu running away in the spacecraft to Earth, we find this little gem of a story about the history of our solar system, which is also theirs. And if up until now it was considered mythology, well, as I've showed you, scientists have discovered that our moon was once part of this bigger, larger planet called Tiamat, or Ki, that now is Earth and the moon. So if the Anunnaki are not real and their stories are mythology, how did they know when technically humans were half apes and still living in caves? Riddle me that. The Anunnaki history from the Sumerian tablets, the Emerald Tablets, the Dead Sea Scrolls, and the Enumelish are all history and not just mythology. Because continuously, science is catching up with what the ancients already knew, proving that there was a much higher developed society here on Earth than we are even today. And in the next episode, we're going to take the voyage with Alalu to Earth.